recovering from COVID and the role Qigong can play in helping you with that. That is going to be the topic of this episode of Qi Life. If you've been following the channel for a while, uh, you might recognize this location that I'm in. There were um, probably quite a few, at least several of the early vlogs on the channel I recorded here. Um, I don't think I ever told you much about it. Uh, the place definitely has atmosphere. Um, it's, uh, you know, a little bit down and dirty and uh, the topic today is maybe a little bit down and dirty as well. Um, you know, it, it's been the strange situation we've had over the last couple of years. I'm not going to get into all the politics of that other than to say how strange it has been to have open discussion of something that's affecting everyone in the world. You know, to have information discussion about that suppressed has been very, very strange. Um, and quite concerning and so because of that because this topic is specifically about COVID uh, yeah I'm <laughs> guessing maybe lots of people will see this video or maybe they won't because maybe the algorithms won't show it to them although I think we've moved on to some degree and that uh, well certainly since the early days where any mention at all would mean that you know everything would just get shut down we've we've progressed from there and I seems like a bit more open discussion is being allowed now. So oh I was going to tell you a little about where this place is. I will get to the topic about COVID soon don't worry I mean this is a vlog it's just a casual thing. Uh, I will get to the topic soon uh, but some people might be interested in the surroundings as well. So essentially this is an old abandoned tennis court and it's right beside the place where I am staying again. I had moved out of here. A lot of things, you know, have been disrupted with this whole situation with COVID. Um, and I had, I had moved out. I was relocating elsewhere and then lots of stuff has happened. I'm back here again at a retreat center, which is just through. Let me turn around here so you can see behind me. If you sort of head through over there, and you go across a little bridge and then there's this retreat center and it's surrounded by the these trees by this forest which is really really lovely yet it's right by the city or, or well the edges of the city not the central city but it's right by uh you know it's, it's actually quite close to a motorway or a freeway depending what terminology you're used to and i don't know if you can see over over the top there you might get a little bit of a hint of commercial buildings and things which are just right over there yet once you're on the property you're surrounded by bush by by forest and nature and it's really really nice but yeah just outside of it we have this abandoned tennis court and i don't i, I think i should find someone to get a little bit more uh, understanding of the history of this because it's a bit of a mystery there's no like paved access way there's no clear access way to this tennis court there's no footpath no road um it's not clear how anyone would have got here in the first place uh and the area around here is not built up it doesn't like now if you go a little a little ways away there are houses there are suburbs there are commercial buildings over there but at the time that this tennis court would have been built there weren't houses around here uh, and there weren't commercial buildings either so like I, I don't know what the history of it is um, but it's largely been forgotten about at this stage apart from people who come down and <laughs> do some graffiti that's constantly changing there's like constantly some new graffiti there which can be quite interesting to look at and also let's see here some skateboarders come in here and things like that but most of the time even though it's got it's got this atmosphere um, it's it's quite peaceful here you can you can hear the road noise and things like that but um, overall it's quite peaceful so it's 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 kind of yeah a little bit of an interesting different place to do some vlogs from okay so I am going to get to the topic now um, and I'm not going to I'm not gonna say anything too radical here warning warning here 
I'm not going to be saying anything too radical. In many ways, what I'm going to talk about here is going to be a follow-on, or you know, quite a good follow-on from the last vlog, which was about chopping wood, carrying water, about focusing on the basics. Now, the reason why I'm making this vlog is um, lots of people have been asking me about it just recently, about people who are who they either themselves or people who they know who have just recently had COVID and uh, are wanting ways to help them recover from it. And that's a good thing, you know, things to boost your health and help you to recover well. And wondering specifically in terms of Qigong, what would be a good approach for that? And I, and I want to emphasize here again, what is important is the basics. Um, and the, the, sometimes people are they're looking for okay some miracle thing to specifically help recover from COVID. Well, recovering from COVID is actually going to be much the same in many ways as recovering from any other illness you know that you may have had, um, or even actually much many parts of it will be the same as just well how do you develop your health in the first place. Now, of course, there are some specific features of COVID um, that you might want to take into consideration. So I, I will talk about that to give some specific direction. But in very broad brushstrokes to begin with, it's like, yeah, actually, oh, so many parts of Qigong practice are going to be helpful in recovering. Uh, you, you know, without even considering which specific Qigong practices, just doing some Qigong practice is probably going to have things as part of it that are going to be helpful in, in recovering from COVID in much the same way that you know pick a qigong practice doesn't really matter which one it's probably going to have some benefit in building your health in the first place now we can focus those in some more specific ways as well of course um, but again back to the chop wood carry water I'd like to stress and emphasize in the first place some of those really really basic things don't go looking for some magic solution recognize the value and importance of the basic things for building maintaining and recovering your health so things like getting enough rest getting enough sleep eating good food um, you know some of those simple things if you have specific health issues or specific uh, side effects consulting with a skilled health practitioner about those specific things and making making sure that you take care of those properly and you know any specific implications with that in terms of your recovery you know th these are these are really basic things uh, you might like to do things again you know basic things things like taking vitamin C taking vitamin D taking zinc as supplements of course ideal if you can just get plenty of that from your food uh, but you might not be so taking some supplements can be really good and in much the same way as that can help to prevent illness it can also help you to recover from illness as well so anyway moving on to the qigong part of this having having got my you know laid my groundwork kind of my disclaimers in some sense our approach with qigong is going to be pretty simple as well i, I will focus this in on some of the specific characteristics of covid though and i have over these last couple of years fortunately i haven't had covid myself um, and as I'm in New Zealand at the moment, not many people here have had COVID. We've had quite unusual situation with restrictions and things here that has prevented that. Although currently we're at the start of an Omicron uh, outbreak. And so the expectation is, yeah, lots of people are going to be getting COVID really soon. Um, but fortunately, as we know, Omicron is much milder than previous variants. So it's it's not going to be so harmful and and that's actually the case with lots of people around the world who have COVID right now you know fortunately it's probably not going to be as uh, have as harsh consequences as earlier variants um, and, and so in many ways probably going to be a bit easier to recover from and that doesn't mean that it can't doesn't have the potential to be nasty of course it does um, and you should you should take care of yourself and and yeah do good things to help you yourself to recover if you do happen to um, happen to to catch it so what are some of the specific characteristics of COVID that you might want to focus on within your qigong practice and as part of recovering from COVID? well 
this has changed a little bit across variants, but I'll I'll talk you know generally some of the you know some of the general features of COVID. Well, it's a respiratory virus, right? We know that, so it's definitely going to have some effect on your lungs. You're probably going to want to put some specific focus on working with your lungs, working with your breathing as part of recovering from COVID. Um, beyond that. As I mentioned, it does have the potential to be nasty for some people. For some people it's really mild, but for some people it's pretty nasty. And it makes their whole system of their body, their energy, work really hard as, as far as dealing with it goes. And that can drain your energy at quite a deep level. Now, the foundation of our energy at a deep level is rooted in our kidneys. And that sort of provides the impetus to support our energy. Um, and, and so this is another area we might want to put some specific focus on. Taking care of our kidneys because it's likely that our kidney energy might become quite drained. Uh, just essentially from fatigue, from the hard work of fighting off this virus. Some other specific features of COVID. Well, it does, interestingly, for a respiratory virus, it does have some neurological effects and can cause some neurological harm. So we're probably going to want to do some things to maybe specifically take care of our nervous system. We'll give that some uh, consideration. Uh, it has also um, some significant effects for some people on the heart. Um, that's been quite well publicized. Uh, and then beyond that, of course, it can, to some greater or lesser degree, affect all of the systems of the body. It can affect the liver, it can affect the spleen, and you, you know, so on, all the different parts of the body. But some of the real key ones are going to be the lungs, just because of the way it directly affects the respiratory system, the kidneys, because of the way the whole energy becomes drained, and we, we need to build that back up if we want to recover fully our nervous system and then our heart to some degree. I'll throw in as well there, and I'll talk about this probably towards the end, um, some, some focus on the immune system as a whole. Because of course your immune, in order for you to catch COVID in the first place and then fight against it, your, your immune system got overwhelmed, right? And that means that's going to be depleted to some degree. And so to recover, you want to build that immune system back up again, and that will help with not just building up the strength of the immune system, but helping to uh, relieve yourself of some of the other effects of the virus as well, as you clear that out. So, what are some of the things within your Qigong practice that you can do uh, to focus on these areas? And again, I'm going to focus largely on really simple things, which is often good when you're recovering anyway, uh, because you might be feeling a bit tired, you might not have a lot of energy to do anything too complicated, and so to be able to focus on some of those really simple things is going to be a good approach for you. So working with your breathing, with your lungs, some of the most basic things you can do uh, to Simply get all of the parts of your breathing working well together in the first place. So get your diaphragm working. Get your diaphragm descending and with a nice smooth action so that you draw air into your lungs and then release it out of your lungs uh, smoothly. That means uh, working with abdominal breathing. We also want to get our ribs functioning well, supporting the motion of our breathing and even our shoulders. So all of those parts work together to, to in, a, in really just a very mechanical way so that we can breathe freely and start to build the strength of the lungs. Um, as I go through talking about different aspects of Qigong, I'll put some links to a whole lot of uh, different free resources uh, from Long White Cloud Qigong in the, uh, in the description below. I'll put links to videos and, and things like that. So where you can find some really good practices, really good approach to simply, you know, rehabilitating your breath if it's been com become compromised and to start to get that expansion of your breath functioning better and freely uh, is we do actually have, it's a free course called The Complete Natural Breath and it goes through and it teaches you different exercises to get all the parts of your body moving freely so that you can breathe more freely. So I'll put a link to that below as well. 
another thing that can be really useful um, for your breath, it's super, super simple, but useful, is simply slowing your breathing down. When we become stressed, when we become overwhelmed, we tend to breathe faster. And when we breathe faster, we also tend to breathe shallower. And if we get into a habit of doing that, and that becomes ingrained, that then actually slows down our ability to recover fully afterwards. And so just simply working on slowing your breathing down will generally also help you to then deepen your breath and it relaxes your whole system. It helps, it takes you out of a, a state of in some ways of being stressed, which you know continues to wear you down, helps you to relax, will help to specifically help the lungs to recover uh, and, and then overall help your whole system to recover. So there's a really simple method for doing that uh, which you can find in another free course we have. It's the Introduction to Qigong Theory and Practice course. That covers a whole lot of basic aspects of Qigong and essentially how Qigong works. We're working with our mind, our body and our breath and gives you examples of different practices and exercises to help you to understand how this works. And so you'll find in there one under the breath the, uh, a simple method for gradually, so without strain, we want to do this without strain, gradually slowing and deepening the breath. So super simple, but really worthwhile, really valuable as a way to work with your breath. Now moving on beyond that, still working with the breath, you might want to look at some moving exercises where you coordinate your movement with your breath. This can again help to physically rehabilitate and open up the spaces of your breathing to, which will then send energy, blood flow, uh, nerve activity into your lungs to help to strengthen them, help them to move more freely and develop the capacity of your breath again. A super simple Qigong practice for this uh, that a few people over the last couple of years have emailed me and, and told me after they'd had COVID and they're recovering that they used this super simple practice as part of their recovery and they said it really, they found it really helped them. And so it specifically is going to help to get your lungs uh, back into shape. And it's also going to gently bring movement back into your whole body. So you can get that energy flowing through your whole body and in some subtle ways it's at the same time it's balancing different characteristics of your energy as well, which is which is going to be helpful too. So it, the practice is called Five Waves. It's super simple, super gentle. You can do it sitting down, you can do it standing. Most of the movement is simply with your arms. It's done slowly and gently. And yeah, gentle, great way to just start to gradually, gently build your energy up and while you're also working on strengthening your lungs. So I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. Super simple, gentle, it's a nice practice to do anyway. All of these things are good to do anyway, but certainly something that's appropriate for someone recovering from COVID. Again, you can even do it just sitting in a chair if you don't have a lot of energy and it will, will help, you know, as some of the steps along the way. Okay. What else? So I think that covers the lungs well enough for now. There's other specific things that you can do, but these are some really simple things, a good place to start. Your kidneys. So in Chinese philosophy, Chinese medicine, the kidneys house the original qi. They are associated with, um, with our bone marrow, right? This is where, where a lot of our stem cells come from, uh, which, which, which then you know, support and heal all the rest of our body. Um, they also, in a sense, govern the hormonal functions through the body. And our hormones are used for all sorts of things. Uh, things related to our emotions, but a lot of things just related to our general energy levels uh, and, and ability to respond to different situations. And of course this can get tired and depleted if our system's been working really hard. So a, a, a simple practice that has quite a lot that focus specifically on the kidneys is called waking the chi and so again i'll put a i'll put a link to a video of that below it's really simple again it can be largely done sitting down i think in the video i'll 
Um, it'll probably be a video where I show transitioning from sitting on the ground to standing. Um, but you can do the whole thing pretty much sitting in a chair. It's not hard to adapt it to that, you know, if you don't have a lot of energy just yet. Um, and that can be super, super useful. There's different parts in there where we focus specifically on the kidneys themselves, on movements that support the kidneys, support the spine, increase, mo gently increase movement through the spine, activate the energy of the kidneys and, and nurture that energy there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a really good, simple one. Interestingly though, um, because another one I mentioned was you probably want to give some specific attention to your nervous system. Um, waking the chi again as, a, as an extension from working on the kidneys uh, it, it, there's quite a lot that focuses quite specifically on the nervous system as well and strengthening and nurturing that because there is a connection between the kidneys the kidneys support the spine and the spinal cord and with a lot of things when you work on one you, you help to support the other and so there's going to be a lot of things to help to rebuild the strength of your nervous system if that has become tired and depleted through the, the process of illness as well. All right, so we've covered lungs, kidneys, nervous system with some simple things you can do for that. What else do we have? The heart, some specific things for the heart. I don't want to get too complicated here. I want to keep things simple. There are specific exercises we can do for the heart. There's some great ones in a practice called 12 Rivers. Um, this practice actually, it's, it's a set of 12 movements for each of the 12 organ meridians within the body. And, and those movements, they, they physically massage the organs inside with the movement, they stimulate the meridian itself, they, uh, they activate and release tension in the area in the spine where the nerves flow to those organs. And the combination of that is it helps to, to balance and strengthen the energy in each of those organs. Um, Doing the whole 12 river set is fantastic if you have the energy and strength for it. For it. it will help to balance your whole system and strengthen your organs, you know, as part of recovery. Um, so probably not if you're just starting to recover from COVID, probably not the first thing you would do. That might be a bit strenuous in a sense for you. You might want to keep it with simpler, gentler practices. But once you get underway and you're starting to feel a bit better, it's a great practice to do. So I'll put a video of that whole, or a link to a video of that whole set of practices in the description below. If that's something that, you know, when you feel ready to do that, it's a great practice to do. Um, and, and again, there are some specific exercises in there for the heart, but again, I'd probably leave that till a little bit down the track. So in terms of working with the heart, actually the five waves that I, des I described earlier, can be really really good for that uh, because again it's, it's it's all movements with the arms I don't have to hold this back further <laughs> we're moving our arms we're moving our arms in different ways and all of this is focused it, it sends energy through our whole body but it's focused around our, our rib cage where inside we have our lungs we have our heart right and so gently as it's opening the lungs it's also going to be opening and massaging and stimulating the energy of the heart as well and so that's a good gentle way to start to, um, to start to strengthen the heart, soothe and balance the energy of the heart. Uh, it's important, and oh, I guess this ties into some things I was saying earlier. One of the things that's really important, if, if you have experienced something where your heart has become a bit upset <laughs> by, by, by something, whether that be the, a virus or a vaccine, uh, whichever way it is, if, if that's disturbed things a little bit, you do want to go gently in terms of building things up again. And, um, and Qigong can be great for that because we can exercise in a gentle way that, but that still effectively is stimulating and encouraging this area to heal, become stronger, more fit and healthy. And that can be a great gentle start. And then as you continue, you know, you might want to do things like, well, walking, <laughs> you know, to, to, to gently build up the strength of your heart. Uh, and then walk more vigorously, and then run, and then swim, and so on. Um, but starting with some qigong can be a great, gentle way to do that. Another type of practice that can actually be uh, really useful for this is specifically for helping the heart. Again, it, it, this is actually a practice that we use to work with all of the organs. Um, but our heart in particular has a very strong relationship with our overall emotional functions. 
and so the, the practice I'm going to suggest it's a sound practice where you make different sounds and the sounds then vibrate different organs in your body that sounds pretty out there right but it's not as out there as it might sound um, and yeah I, I have a, a free course on those it's a little mini course it's just a very short mini course that actually explains this process you might find that interesting uh, how actually yeah, making different sounds vibrates different parts of your body and that then essentially it gives it like a little massage a little stimulation it helps any stiffness any tension to be released and it energizes it allows fresh energy to come through and so that's helpful for all of the organs balancing all of those and but specifically the heart in, in terms because of that connection with the emotions bringing those back into balance and releasing energy that's stuck there so for this one for that little free uh, mini course you actually get that by signing up to the long white cloud qigong newsletter so i'll put a link to a page where you can find a sign up form um, yeah it might be like on the top right hand side of the page or it might be if, actually if i just send you to the home page of long white cloud qigong there's a pop-up so as long as you don't have pop-up <laughs> it's blocked um, as soon as you go to mouse sort of to move around on the page the pop-up will come up and if you put your email address in there you then get an email with the link to um, to that course it's really fascinating and it's a, it's a great yeah it's, it's, it's a great practice in many ways great for dealing with emotions but again it's specifically going to help to clear any blocked congested energy uh, and, and in, a, in a subtle way to bring strength and vitality back to your organs all right last one that I mentioned was your immune system um, now of course the ideal is to keep your immune system healthy and strong all the time uh, so that it helps you to stop getting sicknesses in the first place right so you, but but sometimes you know even the strongest immune system it gets overwhelmed at times different things can happen that you know manage to bring it down and it's important that we build that back up again so I have a series of short qigong practices there's three practices that each about 10 minutes each which you can combine into a longer practice but each of these short practices are quite good by themselves and they work on different aspects of strengthening our immune system with qigong and particularly if you're in the early stages of recovering from illness it's good to be able to do a short practice session so I'll put uh, a link to a video of each of those individual little 10 minute practice sessions each focusing on a different aspect of strengthening your immune system and then there's also a, a short course the short course is actually a paid one it's not it's an inexpensive one um, if you like you can just do the practice for, from the videos they're great um, but if you want to sort of get into the nitty-gritty of understanding how those practices work how each movement works and how each of those contributes to strengthening your immune system well all of that information it's quite comprehensive and that's inside this little short course so I'll put a link to that as well if that's something you're interested in too I think that probably covers it for now um, I think those are <laughs> I've I've probably given you far more than you'll want to do at one time to begin with but some good places to start and again nothing magical no magic bullet that is somehow going to just magically you know make you recover instantly but good fundamental things you can do within your qigong practice that can help with that process of recovery working with your lungs strengthening your kidneys strengthening your nervous system uh, helping to balance and clear congestion from your heart strengthening your immune system you probably don't want to do that all at once you're probably going to want to start with the lungs and then move on into some of the other things you move on to working with the immune system or working with waking the chi to strengthen the kidneys and so on um, but yeah I hope that that helps some of you I know <laughs> this is gonna make it this is gonna help me because I have had a few people asking me specifically what you know what are some things I can recommend for someone who's recovering from COVID um, so instead of me having to have a long conversation with each person individually I can say here's the vlog take a look at that there's some good pointers in there and th this is by no means like exhaustive as I mentioned right at the start of uh, this video um, 
pick a qigong practice in some way it's probably going to have some benefit in the same way it's probably going to have some benefit in building your health it's probably going to have some kind of benefit in helping you to recover your health as well and so there's there's lots of different good basic practical things that you can do uh, and and maybe drawing from other qigong practices that you know as well that will be beneficial in helping you to recover if you have had the misfortune of um, having contracted this virus uh, but if, if you are looking for some pointers hopefully this has been helpful um, if you've enjoyed the vlog this is a bit of a different one from lots of them but um, yeah please like comment subscribe if you're not sure what's on the channel generally have a look at some of the other videos you'll you'll get an idea I co we cover quite a few different things um, mainly to do with well they're all to do with qigong in one sense or another some of them are more to do with just generally what's going on in life some of them are about specific aspects of theory of qigong or different experiences and things like that um, but hopefully some some content that's yeah helpful to a few people out there all right i look forward to seeing you on the next one